Hi everyone, it's Tiffany. Good morning. I am a transformational teacher, the owner of My Inner Temple, and an international healer. Welcome to day two of the Empowered Empath Challenge. In today's challenge, I'm going to cover the four-step energy management system that I use for myself as a healer who sees clients on a regular basis, and also for my students and other empaths and other Reiki healers who work with energies, who are sensitive to the energies and emotions around them. For us, it is very important to utilize this four-step energy management system for us to return to our balanced state. A lot of times as empath, we struggle with absorbing energy that's not ours. So for example, you might have someone in your life that maybe is stuck in negativity. And whenever you interact with them, you just feel sick to your stomach. You feel your energy literally being sucked or drained from your energy field, right? Um, and then sometimes subconsciously, because you want to help, you willingly give away your energy for this person. Uh, this is what some people call energy vampires, which means like they drain your energy. And sometimes, you know, we go through trauma, we go through a lot of tough experiences. And when we are not ready to heal ourselves, this is what it can happen to us. And with me, I remember how tired and drained I used to be when I was depressed and struggling with anxiety. When I was just close off my energy centers, and I would just feel tired, drained. I would sleep 16 hours a day and I just didn't have the appetite to eat. So fast forward to now, I want to share with you this four step energy management system. And before we start, if you go to the description next to you, there's a registration link. So if you have not registered for this challenge, please do so, click in the link. Uh, making sure when you enter your email, you don't have an extra space at the end of be or beginning or else the page is going to give you an error. So make sure that it's just your email without any spaces after or before. When you register for this challenge, your name will be entered in a draw and the winner wins a free healing session with me valued at $120. I don't usually give away free sessions, so this is a really special opportunity. Uh, let me see. Okay, awesome. So once you've entered the challenge, make sure to join the Facebook group. The name is called the Empowered Empaths of Light. And then there I can support you more privately, more individually. You'll also be able to join my community of amazing and kind-hearted empaths who knows what you're struggling through, who doesn't tell you to get over it, don't be so sensitive. They understand your struggles and they're here to support each other. You also be able to download this energy recharge kits. Hi, Angelina. Hi, Hamid. Good morning. How are you guys? Thanks for saying hi. So here's the energy recharge kit. You just download it and you can follow along if you want. I would say print it out. Even if you don't have a color printer, just do black and white so you have it. The point of this kit is to help you assemble not your first aid kit, but your like energy first aid kit where you have a basket or a box having these juicy stuff in there that when you came home from work or when you're feeling triggered or tired, you can just look into the basket and help you remember some of the things that can help you return to balance, return to center. So I'll be following this guide and I wanted to bring everyone's attention to, it's kind of hard to see, a picture of a tree. So what's the difference between an unskilled empath and a skilled empath? A skilled empath 
has the ability to become the light worker that they're here to do, to accomplish the mission with confidence and certainty. When you are unskilled, you become afraid of your gifts. Like, oh crap, I'm too sensitive. I want to shut this down. I don't like that aspect of myself. But when you do that, you're rejecting a very precious aspect of yourself. So what I'm asking you to do today is to be conscious, let go of complaining about your gifts, actually learn the skill set to manage your gifts because it's going to help so many people around you. It's going to help you very much along your life. So with the tree, you want to think of yourself like a tree. The roots grounding yourself towards earth. A lot of star seeds, a lot of empaths have trouble grounding. We always in the upper chakra thinking, creating, wanting to connect to spirit, wanting to return to our planet. So it's really important for us to really ground ourselves, become Mother Earth. And the next thing that the tree does is it absorbs nutrients. So empaths have trouble saying no. We always giving, we tend to overgive, we people please, which is amazing. But at the same time, we close ourselves off from receiving. So we need to be able to recharge your energy field. And always remember, you don't have to use your own energy when you're recharging. You can draw energy from the creator, the center of sun, the mother earth. You can draw energy from these infinite sources of love. Then you also have clearing. So the tree would take up nutrients and whatever waste it has, it clears it out, which is very important because... A lot of times you walk down maybe Young Street or go to a concert and you just come back feeling really achy, not just physically because of like dirt or sweat, but also energetically because you might have picked up some body's energy, right? And if you're really sensitive like I am, I can sense my client's energy before they come into the appointment. I can sense people's energy before they even send me a message. Or sometimes when you hear people yelling at each other, you just feel it to your core and then you go home and get sick for like the rest of the day. Okay. So parents, if you have crystal children, you need to teach your children this four step management system because these crystal star seeds, rainbow star seeds, they're very sensitive to energy and then you need to learn at a young age that it's okay. It is part of the gift, the intuition, it is part of who they are, but they need to learn the skill set to overcome their challenges. And the last thing is protection. So before you know you need to go somewhere, you need to do something that might affect your energy level, you wanna create a boundary, an energetic boundary, an energetic protection before you jump into it, like the leaves all around the trees, a protection around yourself. So to enter this challenge, one of the things you need to do is comment on the live video. So I know you did take part in the challenge to qualify for the price draw. So let me know right now, out of the four things, what is the top aspect that you feel you need to do the most? Is it the protection part, the clearing, the recharging, or the grounding? So for me, definitely is protection because I do a lot of energy healing, spiritual healing. So for me, I needed to do a lot of that. Grounding is starting to become quite easier for me. I can ground myself really well within half an hour of practice. So let me know, comment below, what is it that you want to work on more in your life as an empath and make that commitment. So let us go into pro energy protection. So what do I mean by protection? Protection means creating an energetic boundary so that you're not constantly leaking energy to people or absorbing things that are not yours, right? So many times you may be having a good day and then you walk by someone and you all of a sudden become so angry out of nowhere. And when I checked in, when people come in, I'm like, you're not even carrying your energy, you're carrying someone else's energy. So we got to release that. So if you were the, to able to create that protection in the first place, it might lessen the degree of how much other people's negativity or emotions may be triggering you. And also easier to cleanse yourself, right? Save yourself a headache. 
Uh, I'll give you an example. In the beginning of my practice, I didn't really think of protection as an important thing to do. So I'll go into these uh, huge healing workshops, you know, leading 20 something people into a shadow work or inner child healing. And then I would just slowly feel my energy being drained. And also at the end of the night, I remember one time I got a psychic attack. So I was like, okay, never again. It's not even worth it. It's not worth it to stay up the night, to battle this entity and to heal myself because I'm not taking that five minute to do an energetic protection. So definitely do that for yourself. So some other tips of creating energetic protections for yourself is using crystals. So for myself, I use black tourmaline. He, this buddy is always next to my bed stand because I tend to get really vivid dreams because I'm always using my third eye. And as empath and star seeds, we do that. We have really vivid dreams. Next, we have amethyst. Amethyst is awesome for healing, for bringing in calmness. If you have migraine, any type of pain, amethyst frequency is really helpful in regards to pain and healing. So you can always have that. Then some people you wear stuff for protection, something more tangible, right? So this is Amazonite and aquamarine that I always wear around myself, or your bracelets or earrings that people always wear. Next, you can use visualizing meditation. So I usually like to visualize having a golden bubble around myself, and I usually multi-layer it. So a lot of meditations teach you that, okay, just imagine a bubble around you, but for me, I needed more layers. Maybe it's for me to ground the energy even more, but I find that when I do multi-layer protection, it works more efficiently. So imagine the first layer just about one inch around the body and then the next layer is like a cocoon that surrounds my body like an oval. And then the last layer is like a golden bubble that circle around me. One of my Reiki students, Melissa, also shared that instead of like light, she visualized the mirror. So whatever that comes through, it can bounce right back through the mirror. You can also invoke your spirit guides or send the master, the creator or spirits to come and protect you. Like I have here, oops, a lion spirit here that represents strength and protection. And you also need to strengthen your energy by working in your lower uh, energy centers. So that means your root chakra, your grounding, your earth star chakra, which is to help you release and purify. Your sacral chakra, which is all of your productive system, your water element, very important. And also the lower Dantian and Kundalini points. These are all energy centers that you can invoke and awaken to help you boost your energy level. So there's a lot of different practice that you can do to strengthen your lower um, energy centers. You can use visualization, meditation, breath work. You can do qigong or tai chi. You can do tapping. There's a lot of ways to power up your energy centers. And I have a course coming up called Elevate Your Energy. I did it in, as a live workshop about three weeks ago and everyone loved it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to make it into an online course. Number four is cultivate compassion. So a lot of empaths, sometimes we are too hard on ourselves. We are not gentle on ourselves. And we think, oh, there must be something wrong with me for me to feel this way. But remember that when you gain skill set, when you gain practice, you gain mastery and you become confident. So it's a process. Look at it as a learning process, right? When you watch movies, like all those characters that have special powers in the beginning, it takes them a little bit to hone their craft, to become a master at it. Think of Harry Potter, for example, right? So don't be too harsh on yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Know that this is a learning process. And for my experience, it really helped to have a mentor to help you with that. So seek out a Reiki master or seek out a healer 
and you just know when once you meet them you like okay i trust this person and i'm gonna work with them so the next thing i want to talk about second thing is grounding so grounding is not about just being where you are is much more than that is actually making the connection to earth that i am part of earth a lot of star seeds i work with have trouble with this because they want to go back to their planet they don't feel belong on this planet they just want to has to travel all the time and then you might have trouble with like day-to-day -day activities or manifesting abundance on earth so always ground yourself some of the ways to ground yourself is movement meditation. So my favorite is walking meditation. You can also do yoga. Uh, you can Google uh, YouTube uh, yoga instructor's name called Yoga with Adrienne. And she has a root chakra, chakra sequence that's really simple to do. And I really like that. Affirmations is really well. Anything to help you feel more heavy on your feet is going to help. You can have fluffy blankets, warm blankets around the ankles, around the feet. You can also use essential oils. So for me, I'm not an affiliate, but I just use geranium and frankincense. Yesterday, Zoe mentioned peppermint or wild orange. It's also very grounding. So let me know, what do you use now to ground yourself? Do you use oils? Do you use music? Is there a specific thing that you do? Share with us and share with other people because it might help them as well. Number three is clearing. So taking an energetic showers. Uh, I suggest using the four elements to help you clear. So earth, either having indoor plants to help you clear the air, clear the energy. And if you've been to my healing room before, you know I have at least 30 plants in this room. So the energy is very light. You can use plant medicine. So one of my shaman teacher, she taught me how to use Palo Santo. A lot of people don't like the smell of white buffalo sage. So I find that Palo Santo is better. It wards off negative spirit. It creates protection. Buffalo stage clears negative energy. You can use it to clear your room and space as well. And I say when it comes to plant medicine, it's better to honor the lineage and find a shaman to learn it from. You can use water. So, you, you know, if you're at work, you can bring plant medicine with you. You can use a spray bottle with essential oil. That's what I used to do when I was working in the office. Drinking lots of water helps. Taking a shower right when you get home, right? Just clear off the energy. Don't carry the energy with you around the house and then you gotta clear your house is a lot of work. You can use fire as well. So using natural candle is better. Um, soy wax or palm oil, as, uh, palm oil candle, although I think it's not as good because of the deforestation and then you can also apply warm towels around your body to help you ground yourself using warm and the next, last element is air so diffusing essential oil using incense or opening the window just let some fresh air circulate in indoor because as Can Canadians we always indoor a lot so bring in some fresh air or go outside into a nature walk And the last aspect is recharge. So once you've cleared yourself, create protection, you want to pump yourself up with energy, almost like inflating a balloon, but you're inflating your energy system. So as someone that study the human aura field, I can see people's interactions sometimes. Have you ever felt like when you walk by someone, you kind of shrink a little bit, but not physically, but energetically is because your aura kind of tilt away from the person. Uh, because you don't feel safe with them. So when you do all these constriction with your energy body, you need to pump it back up so that you feel more vibrant. Uh, yesterday in my workshop, we did a 40-minute meditation and practice, and everyone, when they opened their eyes, felt a lot more energetic. 
more grounded, more calm, more zen. So when you do put in the time, when you commit, it does work. When it comes to recharging, one of the things that we like to do is doing yin or restorative yoga, something more relaxing. Static pressure massage. So even if you can't afford going to an RMT, for example, you can use like a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball and just rolling it on the shoulders or pressing down onto a certain spot. So a lot of us up here in the trapezia, we store a lot of tension. So even just pressing it for 15 seconds will help release some of the pressure. Using music as well, I find that uh, 528 or 432 frequency music really help recharge myself. Gra uh, guided meditation where you visualize your energy center expanding, you're drawing energy either from Reiki, from the creator source, bring it into your body, integrate it, and then expand your energy field. You can also, a lot of people recharge through expressing themselves, right? Like painting or creating, crafting, singing. So explore different ways to help you really make your four-step energy system concrete. And to review, the fourth step is protection, recharging, cleansing, and grounding. So four steps. If you're an empath and if you're very sensitive to energy, I encourage you to do these all four steps. And join me in my private Facebook group because uh, I'll be leading some practices every now and then, maybe bi-weekly in the group. So if you want some free classes and healing, join me in the Facebook group where I can share with you some of the practices that really help us. Let me see. If there's any questions from today's session, for some reason, Facebook is not showing me the comments. So I'm gonna log into Facebook. Just give me one second. From today's session, for some reason, Facebook is not showing me. Cool. <laughs> Awesome. So let me know if you have any question, comment below. I'll answer every question on the thread. Tomorrow's challenge is going to be taking your power back by releasing fears around the ego or anxiety. Sometimes empath, we struggle with anxiety and fear. So we're going to explore that and how to work with your ego. A lot of times we think we don't have an ego because we are timid or passive, but that in itself is a form of ego. Perfect, let me see if there's any more questions. Awesome, so take the homework. Today's challenge is for you to print out or even look at the PDF file and work on the four step. Take five minutes, 10 minutes to do some of this work and assemble your kit. And if you want to put down all the items in the kit, take a picture and post it in the Facebook group. That's more tangible and it's more accountable. For me, all of my stuff is on my altar here. So maybe I'll just take a picture of my altar. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me in today's training and I'll see you in tomorrow's training. Have a good day. Bye.